welcome biologists to part two of spec point L where we're going to be looking at the sliding filament theory and here we can see a image of a muscle fiber that's uh, through a cross section and as you can see this muscle fiber comp is comprised of a lot of these myofibrils so this is one myofibril here and um, it's made up of sarcomeres and the sarcomeres are comprised of actin and myosin filaments which we'll look at on the next slide Surrounding this muscle fibre, we also have what's known as a sarcolamella, which is a modified uh, membrane that goes around the muscle fibre. And the, the membrane, the sarcolamella, goes into the muscle fibres using these T-tubules. We also have a modified endoplasmic reticulum called a sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, you also need to be aware of how this looks on an electron micrograph. So you do need to be able to label a myofibril on this image and also keep an eye out for mitochondria as well, which they do like to ask about. So on this image, we can see here that um, I have actin and myosin filaments that make up a sarcomere. And yes, you do need to be able to label an image like this in your exam, and you do need to know um, which parts and which bands are made with actin, myosin, or both. All right, so in this image, as you can see here, we have um, actin and myosin. Myosin is a thick filament, and it has these bulbous heads. And these heads form a cross bridge with the actin. Now, in this particular image here, the tropomyosin on the actin is blocking those binding sites. But we'll look at that again shortly. Now, as I mentioned, you do need to know what is going on with the M line, Z line, A band, H and I band and what it, um, is made, what that's made of. So you're going to pause the video and have a go at noting down what's made of them. So actin or myosin or both. Here they come the answer. You also need to be able to label an image like this. We're going to pause it and have a go. But here we have the Z lines on either side of the sarcomere. We've got the M line in the middle. So that's a sarcomere. You do need to be able to label this from a microscope image. We have the H zone in the middle, the I band, A band, and then that is a myofibril as well. Um, so here's a, a more cartoon image, if you like, of how that is labelled. But again, you do need to be able to do them. Okay, so the sliding filament theory model, this is how it works. So at rest, tropomyosin and troponin are sitting in a position in the actin filament that prevents myosin from forming a cross bridge. However, once I get a nerve impulse, this causes calcium ions to be released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which if you remember is that modified endoplasmic reticulum. These calcium ions cause troponin, and they bind to troponin, causing it to change shape and move that tropomyosin out of those actin binding sites. So therefore, the myosin and the actin can now bind to form a cross bridge. Cross bridge, anything underlined here is keywords taken directly from the MART schemes. Once I've formed that cross bridge between my actin and my myosin, the myosin head tilts, and this is known as the power stroke, and this pulls the sarcomere closer together, it shortens the sarcomere, and this is part of the contraction side. However, I do need ATP to break the actin-myosin cross bridge so that my actin, my um, myosin head can then reform back into its original position and then bind into the next point on my actin. So the myosin head will then bind to a different side of my actin. The head will tilt again in that power stroke, shortening that sarcomere. My ATP will be needed to break that cross bridge. And then the same thing will happen again and again and again. So that actin and myosin cross bridge will form many, many times within a muscle contraction. Now, right at the end of muscle contraction, I need those calcium ions to be actively transported back to my sarcoplasmic reticulum which where they'll be stored until they're needed again. So obviously this is going to need ATP because active transport requires ATP. So there are two places where we need ATP, one to break the cross bridge and the second one is to actively transport calcium ions back to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So there we have it, that's the sliding filament theory model. And here are some excellent questions on it as well. So this is a naming question. It's all, um, If you're naming or stating something, it's quite a simple question. I class this as a grade E kind of question. Okay, so have a go. The mark scheme is coming up now. Please note what they accept and don't accept as well. It's really important here that they only mark the first answer. So just be careful with that. Here's another example of an exam question. So explaining this is more of a grade C. We need to be giving reasons why. So don't be forgetting to underline and highlight things in your question to really help you explain things fully in your answer. And here is the mark scheme coming up. So guys, good luck with your exams. All the best. Make sure you're looking at both sides of the mark scheme and make sure you're writing as much as you possibly can to get the marks.